Hello folks, good morning, this is Spectre, Tesla Spectre. I'm doing a very special thing today. I will try to test all the speeds from 80 over 90, 100, 110, 120 to 130 on the same strip of road, which is exactly this one here. So that you see, we will start here at Brandeis nad Labem and then we will go to Turzice, which is a stretch of exactly one, uh, 10 kilometers. So we go one way here and one way back because in between I will show that here in the um, video later. I did on Google Maps uh, or Google Earth exactly a kind of an elevation profile. So you will see that first we will go down a bit and then uh, sm small hills and at the end one steeper hill. So um, we also see how a car like a Model 3 long range performs on these kind of roads. And the important thing is conditions. It's dry, it's about 11 degrees. So it's like the autumn run. I will try to do one winter run, a spring run, and then also next year a summer run. And right now I still have my 19 inch summer wheels on. So we will see normally that should mean a slightly higher consumption. So this I expect not to be the lowest of all possible consumptions because of the elevation of course, because we cannot recuperate as much as we lose when we go uphill. But I think it's a pretty fair test and it should uh, give us some data on how the consumption relates to speed really. So let's see what happens over the day. So while getting through the city, I would like to provide you with some info on the setting for today. Firstly, you know, conditions are, as you can see, it's pretty dry. It should stay dry, hopefully. Temperature is right now 16, degrees will be 17 degrees might drop to a um, bit less or a bit more but it should stay around that the car itself that's the model 3 long range of course right now i run it on 19 inch summer tires otherwise we have a pretty full battery at, in the healthy 70 to 80 percent range and the setup in terms of the driving will be, as I showed before, we will first go the stretch towards the northeast, 10 kilometers, then turn around and go the same distance back. So by that we should level out a uh, difference in elevation pretty nicely. So that's basically all for now and I'm curious to see how the car will perform and whether we can beat maybe Andreas Hainold's um, results for the hypermiling where he went at only 70 kilometers per hour with our 80 or 90 kilometers per hour leg. So let's start with the first leg of 130 kilometers per hour and as usual I set the speed at 133. result are 194 watt hours per kilometer and now I made a stupid mistake because I somehow forgot the second leg of the 130 and went straight for 120 so I then had to do that at a later stage. So the first leg on, on 120 was at 161 watt-hours per kilometer. Nice result. And off I went to the second leg of the 120, so this time uphill, expecting a slightly higher consumption. Well, it's only a small uphill, it's a few meters, but still. 
and indeed it needed a little bit more. It was at 165 watt hours per kilometer on the second stretch. Yeah, and now I had to do the second leg of the 130 kilometer stretch because I forgot it the first time. Yeah, and on this stretch I had exactly the same consumption as before, 194. Next was then the 110 kilometer stretch first leg, so again at 100. 13 and I just realized I already went a little bit too fast in the beginning. Yeah, and this first 110 kilometer stretch took 142 watt hours per kilometer. And then it went straight into the second leg for the 110 kilometers, so this time uphill. Well, as I said, slightly uphill. And of course there was a slight effect of that. Because the result was this time 153 watt hours per kilometer. Yeah, and then we moved towards the glacial speeds below 110, which I normally really never use. And I have to say it also really feels slow at 100. And we achieved 130 watt hours per kilometer. Yeah, and then came the second stretch of 100 kilometers per hour, which felt even longer than the first, but at least the uh, consumption was not that bad because it went now down to 127 watt hours per kilometer. Yeah, but the worst was still to come because next was 90 kilometers per hour. It literally felt already as if it would never ever pass. I think I never would have the patience to really drive at this speed for a long time. But the result was pretty good with only 121 watt hours per kilometer. Impressive. And so we went on the second stretch of 90 kilometers per hour. And this time, at least the really cool news was we beat already or achieved Hanel's hypermiling with 120 watt hours per kilometer at 90 kilometers per hour. Oh, but I have to say, I was really glad to finally be at these 80 kilometers per hour. Still wondering how people have to uh, tow caravans can manage this but the result is very very impressive we have now 107 watt hours per kilometer that is really cool and then we went to the last of the stretches and I really nearly fell asleep at the steering wheel no idea how people do it towing caravans at this speed but in the end I think it was worth it we finished this one with 109 watt hours kilometer per kilometer and now let's have a look at the overall results so if we look at the overall results and always take the averages over both le uh, legs we see that not surprisingly of course um, the range grows uh, when the speed decreases, that's no surprise, but we also see that there is a sort of slightly exponential development and we see that uh, at 80 kilometers, so kind of the max you could probably achieve when you go somewhere on the uh, on country roads more than highways probably, you can uh, achieve a consumption around 100 kilowatt hours per kilometer, 108, and that brings you to about 700 kilometers of range nearly. Whereas at 130, that drops to nearly, yeah, not half of it, but like 60% of it, 390 or so. And I also 
try to compare now how it is when we look at the development of uh, time gained versus consumption uh, with a graph that would show the constant development. So if it would be always the same, of course, we have slight diversion here. It's, a, it's not a test of thousands of examples. But we see that the consumption stays in, a, in the constant range right up until 120 or so. But then it starts to be exponential. I cannot test more here in the Czech Republic. I would have to go at illegal speeds, which I refuse to do. But we also see when we look at the center of the graph, we see what is the sweet spot if one wants to have the kind of optimal combination of time on the one side and consumption on the other. And that is slightly below 105. To me, honestly, that is a bit too slow. So I don't know why I feel totally comfortable at 110, but if I go at 100, 105, it starts to be feeling a bit slow, but that would be at least as an indication from this test, the sweet spot. So I hope you like this test. It took a lot of time and I would love to see a like from you and better even if you su subscribe so that I can produce more of the contents. Also, let me know what other kind of test you would find interesting and let's see whether I can do that. Have a good day.